Throw a Weihnacht in, everyone! Lars here with a special episode of Camille's Harem. Today I am coming to you with an original Christmas story to help usher in the festivities. Now this is going to be a Christmas ghost story. Yes, that is right, and I'm going to admit that there's a line in the song, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, that has just really, really bugged me for years. You know the one. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. Ah, uh, what are these scary ghost stories? The only one anyone can ever think of is A Christmas Carol. But that is one, count them, one of many Christmas ghost stories. Now, I've done some research and I found out that it was actually very common in the late 1800s to share ghost stories during the winter time in Ireland and Scotland, but many of these stories have faded into the distant past, so I figured I would try my hand at writing a new Christmas ghost story. Now, there are a few parameters I set for myself. One, it had to be about Christmas and convey an appropriate message for the season. And two, it could not be a typical B Christmas slasher horror film type story. No, none of that. We get enough of that already. So in order then to fulfill those two uh, qualifications, I dipped into my own German heritage and came up with a story that draws on the lore of St. Nicholas, Knecht Ruprecht, the Christ Child, and the Erlkönig. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of drawing on multiple time periods and regions of Germany, but you know what, if the Brothers Grimm can get away with it, then so can I. So, without any further ado, here is my Christmas ghost story. It happened one Christmas long ago. Three brothers walked through the woods back from town, carrying with them a new advent wreath. It would be lit up that night not only to celebrate the advent, but prepare the family for the coming of St. Nicholas and Knecht Rulbrecht. Small snowflakes drifted through the barren canopy of branches overhead. The youngest brother danced along the path towards home, laughing. Look, look, it's already snowing! St. Nicholas comes with the snow, and tomorrow we can have a snowball fight! He shouted happily. The oldest brother held out a hand, hoping to catch a single snowflake. None fell into his palm. He grumbled. This is not enough snow! If we get anything, it'll be a thin sheet of ice. Tomorrow's chores are going to be a pain. The middle brother murmured his assent, but he also stuck out his hand. A few small snowflakes tickled his fingers. Even if there is no snow, St. Nicholas is coming tonight. Our shoes will be filled with chocolates, nuts, and fruit. It'll be wonderful, the smallest brother insisted, skipping backwards now. The promise of the Christmas season filled the boy's heart with a warm fire and happiness that not even the coldest night could quench. His words and antics usually brought smiles to his brother's faces and brightened their own dark days and nights. But today, the older brother felt particularly gloomy. It was St. Nicholas Day, and while that meant sweets and goodies for all the good children in the world, it meant a switch in the shoe and punishment for all the naughty children. The older brother gripped the package tightly. Inside was the replacement for the advent wreath that he had broken while roughhousing with his brothers earlier. He had not been very good this year. So many things just aggravated him the older he got, and his parents demanded more and more from him. Why couldn't he just stay little forever? He had lashed out at his parents and did his best to avoid his chores around the house and farm. They had not been happy with him, and had even given the money for the new wreath to his middle brother. Yep. It had not been a good year. St. Nicholas Day is just an excuse to make the so-called naughty children feel bad and obey their parents in the coming year. It's slavery with chocolates and nuts. No, it isn't, the youngest brother said emphatically. St. Nicholas Day is a time to appreciate what you have and be rewarded for your good deeds. You can always do better and find your name on, written on the right side of the Book of Life next year. It's all fake. The oldest brother said irritably. It's only the priest with one of the altar boys dressing up like people who never existed. They hear back from our parents if we've been good or not, and then take great pleasure in punishing those who haven't been good. The youngest brother was visibly upset at this point. He of course did not believe anything that his older brother had just said. The middle brother was also upset. Personally, he still believed in the saints and magic of Christmas, but saying so right now would make him an enemy of his older brother. And as any sibling caught in the middle understands, it is hard to be set against your oldest brother or sister. And so, he stayed quiet. 
You're just wrong, the smallest of the three maintained. You're just wrong. What about the Christ child and the presents on holy night? She decorates the tree and leaves out all our gifts, no matter how good or bad you've been, because God loves us all. That's all put up by our parents when they tell us to go play outside, the oldest brother said grumpily. I'm telling you, none of this is real. The youngest brother looked ready to cry. I think that's enough, the second brother mumbled. Whatever, come on, let's just get home, the oldest brother said angrily. He already knew that he would regret treating his brother this way. The smallest was just trying to be nice and cheer him up, but he just wanted to get out of the cold at this point. The wind picked up, and more snowflakes fell as they continued down the path towards home. Meanwhile, the Erlkönig strode through his desolate kingdom. The end of the year was fast approaching. The time of Christmas had arrived, the harvests were complete, and the mystical twilight hour in which the worlds of the living and the spirits intertwined was long past. His powers and presence would now have to bow to a much higher power. But there was still time before the Christian bells tolled and heralded the advent of the saints. Just enough time to snatch up a few more human souls to play with. As he walked among the trees, he heard the arguing voices of the three tiny children. They were far off yet, but the old elf knew his woods and world well. He would be there in a second to greet them and invite them to a feast. Oh, his kind would dine well during the darkness and cold of the winter and the blinding light of the Christian's hour. Stepping out from behind a tree, the Erlkönig flourished his cloak of leaves, all orange, yellow, brown, and gold. He bowed to the children and said, my, my, what wonderful children I see walking through my woods. The children stumbled back from him and huddled together. It was always like this when he spoke with mortals. They were always frightened of him at first, but that had not bothered him for a very long time. <laughs> I'm just concerned that three young brothers are arguing on the night of St. Nicholas, no less. He cried out dramatically, straightening his crown of antlers. And I had to come immediately. Three good children should not be fighting during this time of year. You don't want to get the switch, do you? The boys all shared scared looks before the older brother said, We'll be just fine. We're going home right now. We aren't supposed to talk to strangers, the littlest brother said. The second brother nodded in agreement. Oh, <laughs> I'm no stranger, the old Koenig said kindly. Yes, you are, the youngest one insisted. The ancient elf sighed. Child, were you by chance born in this town? The child was quiet for a moment and then bobbed his head. The other children agreed. They were all born here. See, you were all born in a town, surrounded by my forest. I have known you all since you were very young. You have played in my woods. You have thrown my pine cones. You've used my branches for swords and lances. And I have watched every moment, and I've loved it. Your parents, too, use my woods and my lands, and I allow it because we are such good friends. If you don't believe me, let me walk you home. You'll see your parents greet me with a smile and a hug, especially on a night like St. Nikolaus Tag. The children thought about it. They had never seen this man before, but he spoke so confidently. If he truly owned these woods, he would be right. Everything they used and played with could belong to him. And he was speaking so kindly to them, too. Let's go with him, the older brother said. We're close to home anyway. Father and mother will be able to tell us if he's telling the truth. The other two trusted their older brother and followed his lead. The Erlkönig clapped his hands together and said, Let us be off. He led the way down the path, singing a tune that was unfamiliar to the boys. The children followed him, huddled closely together. But the strange man did not turn on them, and soon they relaxed their guard. And they were so close to home. Knowing this, the Erlkönig asked, What do you expect to get from St. Nicholas tonight? Fresh oranges and apples? Perhaps some roasted nuts? Or even chocolate wrapped in gold? The littlest brother had forgotten his parents' counsel and his own words when he said, Yes, yes, we will get all of those. St. Nicholas will bring so much our shoes will be full by morning. Wonderful, the forest king said kindly. He glanced over his shoulder and said with a knowing tone, But not all of you will get fresh fruits or wonderful nuts and chocolates wrapped in gold. Am I right? The older brother scowled. 
No, I won't get any of that. I am already getting the switch. The Alkunik frowned. A good big brother like yourself? Surely you deserve a reward. He broke the advent wreath. The middle brother replied timidly. We had to go into town to buy a new one. Our parents aren't very happy. But this is one small offense. Christmas is a time for forgiveness. Surely it is not as bad as all that. The old saint would never be so cruel to children, the king insisted. It is. The oldest brother sighed. I, I've just had a hard year. And Christmas is a time for punishment and not rewards. It's definitely not a time for forgiveness. Yes, it is, the youngest said. You just have to try to be better. Christmas is a wonderful time. You just have to see that. I can't, the older brother admitted. Then we must change that, the Earl Koenig replied. From within the folds of his cloak, he produced a handful of large chocolates wrapped in gold leaf. The smell of raspberries and strawberries wafted from the collection. They even glowed in the growing darkness. If St. Nicholas won't bring you sweets, then how about I give you an early present? These chocolates are for all of you. The boys once more hesitated. Candy from a stranger? But wait, he wasn't a stranger. He had known them since they were born and watched them grow up. The Erlkönig added a convincing wink, and the oldest brother stepped forward and took some of the chocolate. The second brother soon followed, but the third kept his distance. I'll wait until tonight, when St. Nicholas and Kanek Ruprecht show up, he told the elven king. If you want, but these chocolates are so tasty the Earl Koenig said invitingly. Still, the youngest would not accept a treat from him. The wily king changed his tactics. And let me see the advent wreath. It must be beautiful to grace your lovely home for such an important night. The boys undid the packing to reveal the advent wreath. It was small and simple, a few pine boughs wrapped around a thin circlet of wire with four iron candle holders placed in the center. The elven king picked it up and inspected it. My, 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 this just won't do. You've been cheated out of your hard-earned coin. Please, allow me to give a gift to your entire family. It will be an advent wreath made of pure gold, wrapped in the freshest pine cuttings, decorated with berries and snow that never melts. It will be the envy of the entire town, and I will even repay you what money you lost. The children were taken aback, that was a kingly gift, and the forest king was happily offering it to him. Yes, please, may we have it? The oldest brother asked, thinking that such a gift would repay all his bad deeds for the whole year. His Christmas might yet be saved. Absolutely, the Earl Koenig answered happily. In fact, I will take you all to my home immediately. You can warm yourselves there by my great fire, and my children will happily play and dance with you and teach you the songs of forgotten ages, as I prepare my gift for your parents. And there will be even more sweets. Come. He stepped off the path and into the dark woods, offering the three children an inviting hand. The oldest brother, one hand still full of delicious smelling sweets, took the king's hand. He turned to the others and said, Come on, let's go. The littlest brother spoke up again. No, we're so close to home. St. Nicholas will come soon, and mother and father will be worried if we aren't there. This won't take long, the Earl Koenig said. But you also said that you would greet our parents. And so I shall, once we have their presence. But the littlest one would not budge. We have a wreath already. We don't need much more than that. We have each other too, and that's what counts. I don't want our parents angry with us. The second brother stopped walking towards the elk Koenig and said, He's right. If the king of the woods wants to join us, he can come later. But his present will make up for everything, the oldest brother said hotly. You are both getting candies and fruits and nuts, but I'm getting the switch. This is my chance to redeem myself. You two go ahead on home if you want. We need to stick together, the youngest cried out. You need to grow up and realize that not everything is a fairy tale. The oldest said irritably, Go home! Come, child, the Earl Koenig implored. Time was running out for him. We must be quick. 
With that, he and the oldest disappeared into the darkness. The air became still, and the snowflakes ceased to fall. The sky grew darker and colder. The two remaining brothers held hands and hurried off with the advent wreath, dropped by the Elkunig as he left. Tears ran down their faces and froze in place, for they knew their brother was gone. The oldest brother stepped into another world. The trees became pillars that held up the night. Stars and darkness were the ceiling to this other land. Shadows even deeper than the night shifted just beyond his view. The brother held tightly to the Erlkönig. There's no need to fear. Nothing will harm you so long as you are with me. I've never seen the forest like this before. That's because you've never been to my home. But here we arrive! Suddenly, there was a large bonfire before them. Beautiful elves in dresses and tunics of spring and summer leaves and flowers danced around the flames. The smells of spiced roasted meat and cooked vegetables filled the boy's nose. And there were floating platters of piled high with sweets and fruit and nuts. Meet my children, the Alkinic said. Go, dance with them. Have some fun and I will prepare the wreath. The oldest boy approached with trepidation. These elves were so magical, so wild, and they scared him a little. But the girls swarmed him and took him by the hands. They pulled him into a dance around the fire and sang. Their song was so beautiful that he quickly became mesmerized. Green vines snaked their way from their clothing and wrapped around his arms and chest. Sweet-smelling flowers blossomed around him putting him at ease. No sense of soreness or tiredness crept into his body as he danced wildly with the elves. He was caught up in their song and missed the shadows that drew close to the fire, barely seen, but very present. Eventually, the Erlkönig returned, a glass of glowing wine in his hands. He sat himself on a throne of twisted branches and silver. "'Where's the advent wreath?' the boy asked, excited to see the amazing present. "'You!' are my advent wreath. The Earl Koenig laughed, bright with the life of a human in his youth, bound in the bones created by God and wrapped in the vines of my magic. I hope you will accept this gift. Harsh laughter crashed around the boy. He let go of the elves, but the vines held him fast. They quickly transformed into chains and they snaked their way all around him. They did not restrict his movements, but forced him to continue dancing. You lied, he accused the Earl Koenig, and you knew better. But you have been a naughty boy who refuses to learn from his actions. Eventually, you must be taken by them. You could have broken those creepers a long time ago, but you refused, and now they have become strong chains. Chains you willingly allowed. The laughter around the boy grew. It was not kind, but malevolent. The shadows came around the fire, revealing themselves to be all kinds of monsters. They joined the joyous elves around the fire and took hold of the boy, dancing with him. He flinched but could not escape their coarse fur and sharp claws. The boy's limbs became exhausted, but still he was forced to dance. He had eaten delicious sweets, but now his stomach growled with intense hunger. The chains yanked him along in a vicious dance, depriving him of his free will, and the fire became colder than the middle of the winter. He cried, but tears quickly froze to his cheeks. The Erlkönig smiled and toasted him with his wine as bells mournfully chimed in the distance. The night had come. The long-awaited night had finally come. Bells tolled merrily in the distance as Knech Rubrecht trudged through the falling snow. A real storm was picking up. It would transform the entire countryside into a child's winter wonderland. Bowed down by a heavy sack full of candies, fruits, and nuts, Knech Rubrecht made his way up a short hill. The nearest town's lights winked happily in the flurry of snowflakes. A quiver of sharp sprig switches clattered against his side as he climbed. Looking up to his destination, he saw his old friend, St. Nicholas, waiting for him. The ancient bishop stood tall in his robes of red and gold, a golden shepherd's crook in one hand and the book of life tucked under the other arm. 
His white beard was combed by the wind, though it was not as long as Ruprecht's. When they met, few words passed between them. The two friends had performed their holy duty for many years, and they knew what the other would say. Though that did not prevent the old saint from saying, Merry Christmas, Ruprecht. Merry Christmas, Nikolaus, Ruprecht said gruffly. The sack is ready. Always is, as are the rods. Good. It is almost time. St. Nicholas withdrew a large golden watch. It was a magnificent creation of the angels, specifically made for this special night, granting the saints enough time to bring their rewards and punishments to all the children of the earth and welcome in the time of the Christians, the birth of their Lord and Savior. There was a break in the storm, and a wonderfully bright star shone down on both men. A pillar of light surrounded them, and they looked up. They saw the face of the Christ child, that ancient angel who heralds the coming of the Christ. Her beautiful smile graced them as she said, The most wonderful time of the year is at hand once again. Go forth into the world, my servants, and give rewards to the good children, and bring punishments to those who have been naughty. It will be done. St. Nicholas said, inclining his head to the angel. It had always been. Knek Rubrecht turned to leave, but the angel called to them both. Before you go this year, and enter the homes of man, there's one more thing you must do. There's a child taken by the Erlkönig. Go to his halls, and bring the boy out, and deliver him safely to his home. See that this is done first, so that many may learn from his mistakes, and understand the true meaning of Christmas. An unorthodox request. The princes of darkness were allowed to claim the souls that fell into their hands, but the two saints would not shy away. They had cheerfully accepted their stations, granted immortality so they might bring happiness and peace to the children of the world. If even one child stood in need of them, they would be there. We shall go at once. Come, Rubrecht, Nicholas said. Rubrecht grunted and stomped over to a pine tree and plucked off a small branch and stuffed it in his pocket. The Christ child waved to them both. Good luck, my friends. Bring word to the children so that I may prepare for my advent to the earth. Merry Christmas! The two saints descended from the hill and stepped into darkness. The Erlkönig knew his realm had been invaded the moment the saints stepped foot within his halls. The music faltered and his people paused in their dancing. Only their victim continued to dance with reckless abandon. The forest king frowned and looked to his right. From behind one tree came St. Nikolaus and Knech Rubrecht. Many of the monsters screamed in terror and fled. They had thought this would be a night of festivity and revelry. They had not expected such an intrusion. Only the darkest and largest of the Erlkönig's fiends remained with him and his children. Gentlemen, he greeted, welcome to my home. I dare say that I had no idea you would arrive. You are usually so busy this time of year. Let me get you a glass of wine. Or if you would prefer, I can procure some glue vine for your travels tonight. Your offer is appreciated, St. Nicholas said kindly. But we are not here for pleasantries. The Christ child has declared that the boy should go free. No! The Elkinic shouted, standing up from his throne. He! is my property. He took my gifts straight from my hand. He willingly made his choice to follow me and sought to cover up his crimes. According to the contracts made of old, his soul belongs to me. Let's have a real fire as we discuss the matter, St. Nicholas said, stepping up to the bonfire. He jabbed it with his staff. Real warmth washed over the clearing and everything became lit up. The remaining monsters turned and fled. Their power was nothing before the saints. Rubrecht, please undo the child's bonds. Gladly, Knech Rubrecht muttered, walking over to the haggard child. He brushed the branch of pine against the chains. They crackled and sparked before falling into pieces at the boy's feet. He gasped and collapsed before the old man. As you can see, it is well within our power to save him, Nikolaus told the Earl Koenig as if they were talking over tea and cookies. The forest king was livid. How many souls have I claimed that you did not save, but this one whelp alone you rescue? Where's your lord's justice? This is a breach of our laws. The princes of darkness may have their lawful prey, St. Nicholas conceded. But our lord has paid the price for this child, and will pay again and again, as oft as needed. 
The sins of men are not those of a child's misdeeds. Christmas is a time for new beginnings, a time for forgiveness, as we think upon the coming of the Lord, which ended the old and ushered in the new, an age of forgiveness and mercy. Rubrecht said gruffly, picking up the boy and cradling him. But there I see the tools of punishment! The Earl Koenig replied scornfully, pointing to the switches. This boy knows very well that Christmas brings guilt, anxiety, frustration, and fills many with feelings the exact opposite of what you describe. This feels like the Christ child sticking her nose where it does not belong. Knecht Rubrecht gave the Earl Koenig a scowl that could have shattered stone. But it was St. Nicholas who said, There are natural consequences to all our choices, both good and bad. We bring those with us, that is true, but there is no name in the Book of Life that is outright condemned to hell. Christmas comes every year to fill us with hope, hope for the next year, and to remind us all of the good blessings we've had in our lives. The sins of the past die with the old year, and the innocence of a new year begins. The price was paid, and we are taking the boy. He will receive the rewards of his deeds, and learn the true meaning of Christmas. The Earl Koenig laughed. Fine, take him. But boy, you've made this choice once already to walk into my kingdom. It will be easier the second time around. When a day comes that you find Christmas has lost its savor and its weight becomes a drag on your happiness, I will gladly take that burden from you. However, if you wish to truly be free of me, cling to your saints and traditions. Just know, however, my house is always open to you, and my children will ever be so happy to have you return. The child shivered in Rubrek's arms and could barely squeak. His fate is no longer your concern, king of the woods, the old man said and marched off. The Earl Koenig glowered and quenched the fire he had made with a fist, plunging them into deep darkness. But the saints could not be stopped. They rounded a tree and stepped out into the forest, already covered with a blanket of snow. It was dark, but nowhere near as bad as the king's palace. Knecht Rubrecht set the boy down and prepared a lantern, which gave off both light and warmth to the trio. Come, St. Nicholas said kindly, taking the boy's hand. We are taking you home. Strength returned to the boy, and he silently followed Nikolaus. The old saint led them back along the road towards home. They were silent as they went. The boy was unsure of what he could even say. This was certainly not the priest and his altar boy. These two were the real Saint Nikolaus and Ruprecht. He was so happy to be with them, so happy to be saved, so happy to be going home. But what about his family? How would they react when they saw him again? He had abandoned his younger brothers and left the path following a stranger, and he had not brought back the fantastic gift. No, there would be no redemption for him this year. Soon the house loomed through the falling snow, and now fell gently and tickled the lad. The soft sound of snow crunching under his feet eased his concerns a little. The presence of the saints drove away the fears and darkness that he had experienced in the Earl Koenig's home. Knecht Rubrecht reached the door first and knocked heavily. There was a pause, and the boy's father, face full of worry and tears, opened the door. He stood there in shock and amazement. The old man then recited his poem. From out of the forest I now appear to proclaim that Christmas tide is here. For at the top of every tree are golden lights for all to see, and there from heaven's gate on high I saw the Christ child in the sky. And among the darkened trees a loud voice called to me, Knecht Rubrecht, old fellow, it cried, hurry, make haste, don't hide. All the candles have now been lit, heaven's gate is open wide. Both old and young shall now have rest from cares and daily stress. And when next I fly, it's Christmas again, will be the cry. And then I said, O oh Lord so dear, my journey's end is now quite near. The boy knew better. This was only the beginning of their night. However, to hear the old poem recited from Knecht Rubrecht himself made the moment magical. He was caught up in the old lyrics until the saint finished. From out of the forest I now appear, to proclaim that Christmas tide is here. Now speak, what is there to be had? Are there good children, or are there bad? 
The boy's heart immediately sank. But his father cried out, My son! His father brushed past Knecht Rubrecht and raced out into the snow without his jacket. He scooped up his son and twirled him about, crying. Next came his mother, and then his brothers. They all likewise wept and rushed him, enfolding him in a massive hug. Tears spilled once more down his cheeks, but this time they did not freeze. St. Nikolaus gently led the family inside the warm house and shut the door after Rubrecht. The two old men waited until the family finally broke apart. He then opened the Book of Life and read from it. He proclaimed the two younger boys to have been sufficiently good. The youngest brother gasped with joy, though his eyes were still red. Out came the fresh fruits, the large crispy nuts, and the candies wrapped in colorful colors that twinkled in the light. Treasures right out of Knecht Rubrecht's sack. The oldest brother did not even care when the saints declared him as naughty and stuffed a switch in his shoe. He had expected and accepted as much. What he did not expect were his two brothers, carrying over their shoes and pouring their goodies into his own. What are you doing? I don't deserve those. I left you to go with the Erlkönig, he protested. Yes, but you came back, the middle brother told him. And we love you. We don't want you to be alone without anything, the youngest said earnestly. The parents stood by, so proud of their sons. The oldest still wasn't certain. St. Nikolaus stepped forward and explained, My child, Christmas is about so much. We remember the Lord who came to the earth to live and die for us, the greatest gift we could ever be given. We give one another gifts to remind ourselves of just how much we are loved. And by giving, we serve others just as he did. And we save others just as he did. We love others just as he did. But one more thing, by giving gifts we bring others into our lives and we fill their lives with love. Your brothers have shared more than just their presence with you. They are sharing everything because the Lord gave us everything. That is the spirit of Christmas. But lastly, when you were surrounded by the Erlkönig and his subjects, you felt horribly alone and in pain. But on Christmas, we should remember that we are never alone and that all our pains will be taken from us. My son, you are richly blessed. Knecht Rubrecht pointed to the boy's filled shoe and added, That switch there is a reminder. Remind us of how many gifts we should have in our lives. Taking the Earl Koenig's offer leaves us with something dead and painful. Choosing good all year round fills us to the brim with joy. Merry Christmas, lad, and enjoy your many presents. The saints shook hands with the parents and gave them some goodies as well before departing into the night and the falling blanket of snow. The family embraced again and together they shared their many bounties and blessings, eventually singing the songs of Christmas. And as the saints made their way around the world and through the winter storm, the homes of many rang with the joys and music of the Christmas season. And though not every heart was conscious of it, they beat with the love and laughter of the Christmas spirit, a light in the darkest time of the year, and the beginning of a new and blessed age. I hope you enjoyed that story. Though we still have a couple of videos coming up before the year is done, let me just take this moment to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, wherever you are and whatever it is that you do during this time of year. Thanks for being a part of this adventure that we call writing. And if you are looking for some stocking stuffers, then let me suggest that you go check out my newest book, Sandwich Desperados. This spoof of Fast and Furious is one that you never knew that you needed in your life. Whether this be for yourself, for a loved one, for a friend, or your worst enemy, you will not regret getting this book. Link to purchase a copy of Sandwich Desperados is in the description. And until the next video, y'all, Tschüss.